Hi guys, it's Monday and welcome to the start of this week. I'm having a bit of a rough day. I just kept waiting to start this vlog for when I felt a little bit better. But I don't think that's going to happen. So I'm starting it here. Today I just don't even feel present. My aunt came by to say hi and then Kayla came to come access my port and I felt like I just couldn't even communicate really. Um, I don't know how else to explain that but I'm hoping that it's going to rain soon. It looks like we have another storm building so hopefully that's what is affecting me so much. We had planned to go down and see my doctor today but we got a call from them this morning saying that they booked me in to see him next monday which big picture is really great because he's booking more in october but we are just hoping that my body has the ability to really wait that out my team down here says that this isn't safe to be putting up with um we might just have to drive down there and go to the ER. But I really want to try to see if I can make it through this week. I would feel really bad if we did it that way. I don't want him or anybody else to think that I think that I'm like more important than everybody else and that I don't have to follow the rules. But at the same time, I know I have to listen to my medical team and they will have to make the call when they think that this is no longer something that's safe. I've got all my stuff packed six hours away. I'm just ready to get up and go if I need to and just hope it's the right thing. Oh and just really quickly while I'm thinking about it, um, I know I've been talking a lot about how my vision is really bad and how I have very little vision and I haven't really like explained exactly what I've been seeing but basically it's kind of closed in on the sides so I have more like tunnel vision but everything's extremely blurred and then double and sometimes I can really only see out of one eye but mostly I can see colors shapes and movement and I have had a few people ask how I've been managing to keep up with social media and video editing and video editing is the hardest I would say I make sure that I try to do as much of it as I can over the week so that it's not just all in one day. That being said, obviously, I still have a lot to do on Sunday nights. Mostly, I just try to do as much as I can whenever I can, especially after seeing Trish. Um, you probably noticed I've kept up more on Instagram. Instagram is the easiest because it's mostly pictures. So if you have messaged me on Facebook in the last couple months, I probably haven't replied and that's not because I don't want to, it's just that I have a really hard time keeping up with messages right now. I also find that Instagram is a lot more accessible to me, especially with my voiceover. I've been using the voiceover feature on my iPhone, which is something that some people can deal with and some people really, really can't. But basically I have my phone rigged up so that when I hit the button three times, Voiceover on. Dax. Voiceover comes on. Pinterest. Page one of two. Instagram. Seven. Facebook. F Facebook. So I can scroll through things items. Page without one looking of at two. them, which is but nice. Instagram. So I find that this is the easiest Laura way to communicate. Reply to your story. Three yellow heart. I love you Sending too, Laura. Your way. Like. Like. But that's actually a feature that I feel like more people should know about. It's very easy to turn on in your accessibilities tab in your settings. You can pretty much do anything without vision. You can even One take face. a selfie. Small face. Face centered. Take picture. Button. Camera. Photo. Portrait. 6.22 p.m. There you go. And that is how I've been using social media. Good morning guys, it's Tuesday. We're about to leave for our PT. I'm feeling a lot better today than I was yesterday, thank the Lord. We finally got that storm that had been building up for days and as soon as it started raining, I just started to feel a little bit better. Definitely not back to myself, 
definitely super cranky and miserable to be around. And this morning, I started my day off by covering my armpits in roll-on lip gloss instead of roll-on deodorant. Oh, I'm home and I'm so exhausted. And all I want to do is climb into this beautiful little cave of blankets. Oh, so badly. But I have medicines to take and feeds to fill back up and saline to hook up. Oh, all I want to do is just curl up. I just want to take a real nap instead of like a planned nap. But the good news is I have this amazing shirt. So that makes it a little bit better. Trish stuck her fingers in my eye sockets again and in my like throat to <laughs> try to like get some of the tension out of my jaw. And it worked really, really well. She is the weirdest kind of magic and I love her. It's endlessly amazing to me how tiring it is to do the cranial work or rather have it done to you because it like looks like nothing. It looks like you're just lying there and she's just holding the back of your head but she's doing so many things and your body is going through a time. Your body is like I'm rolling down a hill. Now I'm like on a roller coaster. Now I'm at sea. Like now I'm just spinning in space and my mass levels start going and my dysautonomia goes off and I'm hot and then I'm freezing. And <laughs> I walk out there feeling like my brain has gone through the tumble dryer. But yet somehow I feel so much better. I was talking to a friend last night who also sees her and she described her vision afterwards as like panorama and like that is such a perfect way to explain it. I go there and I feel like my scope of vision is like this and then she'll work on me and it's like this huge expanse. I've never been able to look so far side to side. Today she had me looking around and I realized that I can see my own nose, which is something that I've never seen before in my life. Like I can cross my eyes and see my own nose. <laughs> I couldn't do that before and it doesn't hurt. Like it felt like someone was always tugging at the back of my eyes. And so if I were to like move them at all, it felt like it was just pulling and pulling gone. And it's strange because even though I'm still seeing blurry and double, it's somehow sharper. I don't know how to explain that one. I don't know how to explain any of what she does, except that you leave feeling like a different person. But it can be difficult to get used to. Like, if you're used to feeling one way for your whole life, you start to adapt to that. And then suddenly everything's changed. You're feeling better, but also maybe you're not functioning as well. That's something I think that a lot of people struggle with, especially at the beginning of their physical therapy journey. I know I struggled with it, where it's like, yep, I'm definitely feeling different. It's definitely better, but I don't know how to use this yet. Same with anything, you know, you do get used to it and your body does get used to those adjustments. It just takes time. It's kind of funny actually, but I had no idea how to use my thumb, like my fingertip never had to do that before. I had never in my entire life like used this part of my thumb because I just couldn't. Any kind of pressure that I put on my thumb immediately bends it back. So I mean this was my fingertip. I used this for absolutely everything. I used this to type on my phone. I used this to do my hair. Everything. And then I got my ring splints and it went from this to this. And all of a sudden I had to relearn how to do absolutely everything. And so I was super clumsy at the beginning. It was so bad. And like, we're like, oh no, I thought we got these to make her less clumsy and now she's even worse. It was a process, let me tell you. But now I have fingertips. Everything takes a little time to get used to. I'm gonna go take my meds and fill my beads and hook up my saline like a good compliant patient and then maybe I can mercifully crawl back in bed. Okay guys, well I am just waking up from a very very needed nap. Oh my gosh was I exhausted. I definitely have messed up my sleep schedule for the entire rest of the week now because I'm just waking up and it's now like 10 p.m. but 
worth it. I am kind of sad though that I slept through my peak vision hours post therapy session, but I'm definitely noticing some weird vision changes after what we did today. I think for the most part, they're pretty positive. I definitely wouldn't say that they're negative. I would just say that that I feel different. There's just so much going on. It's kind of hard to tell what is causing what. But now that I'm awake, I kind of don't know what to do with myself. I'm not really feeling well enough to work on any jewelry projects or anything like that. I'll probably just go back to editing. I'm still trying to edit my way through the review video that I did of that brace last week. Editing is definitely very difficult at this point and I just want to make the best quality content that I can and it's frustrating because I know that right now I'm not or rather I am. I'm making the best that I can but not the best that I could under different circumstances, if you know what I mean. Like, I have the potential to make better quality content if I had a better quality body, but unfortunately that's not the case. And I suppose I would have nothing to vlog about if it were. I think my mom took a nap too, so maybe I can grab her and we can watch an episode of something on Netflix or whatever. We've gotten really into watching Anne with an E, which is the Anne of Green Gables series on Netflix. I love to read and I really do credit a lot of my love of reading to my mom. My mom has always really encouraged me to be a reader and we would always read a lot together. I think every single night until I was probably like 14, she would sit down with me and read a chapter or two of a book out loud. She also always kept an audiobook in the car, so every single car ride that we took, there was always an audiobook playing. So I just have a lot of fond memories of that and because of that, I was pretty well read as a child. Anyway, I think that Anne of Green Gables was one of our real favorites to have read together. And then of course we watched the movies. So now I think it's just extra special that we get to sit down together and watch the show. I have to say, it's definitely a really well-made show. I love it so far and I really like the characters. Definitely a little bit dark though with some of the flashbacks. I almost wonder if she would have let me watch the show if I were the age that we had read the books. We were definitely a bit sheltered when it came to what we were allowed to watch back then. I don't know, my parents used to be a lot stricter when we were kids. I think that we have just like worn them down by now. <laughs> I feel like there's going to be a lot of older siblings out there who get me on this one because I'm always saying that my sister and I grew up with different parents. Like there were so many rules and they were so much stricter with me and then my sister came along and was like did whatever she wanted. We older siblings definitely had to pave the way. Look at this. Everything I own is just like packed away now and now we're not leaving for another week. What do I do? I'm not gonna unpack everything. I guess I just live out of these bags now. Maybe I should just always live out of these bags so like it would make my life so much easier. Good morning guys and welcome to Mayhem aka Wednesday. I am home alone right now. My Nana unfortunately took a fall and fractured something in her back, so my dad is at the hospital with her. And then randomly in the middle of the night, my sister had a blood pressure drop that they couldn't get under control. So my mom's been in the ER with her all night. I've been up sick most of the night and I have a very, very important pain specialist appointment to get to today. That's two hours away in Rhode Island. It looks like my dad is going to be driving me, so I'm not going to have my mom as backup. We have 15 pages of stuff to follow up on from last time and now we have to talk about my ongoing issues and the surgeries that I'm probably about to have and I can't think. Like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. First of all, I feel horrible. <laughs> I've just been up all night. Second of all, I, I am so so used to having my mom with me in appointments. I'm sure that a lot of you guys with a chronic illness understand that like your parent or your spouse or whoever your support system is really becomes part of your team and you get kind of used to working together when half of that team is missing. It's a little bit tricky. So I'm a little bit stressed out because I feel like I have to have a bunch of conversations that I can't even mentally deal with right now. It's hard for me to get the words out and my thoughts out and it's frustrating. Not to mention the fact that my mom has the car. The one that reclines and I can go in and has my wheelchair in it and everything. 
I guess I better go and figure that out. I don't know guys, when it rains it pours. All right guys, well we miraculously actually made it to my pain doctor. My dad drove me, he's taking a little rest over there. <laughs> he has some smart crutches in here, which is really cool. Like I've never seen them before and I've always wanted to try them. So I'm kind of fighting the urge to try them out since I'm still non-weight bearing on my upper body. But look at how cool they are, they're even zebra print. If you guys have never seen smart crutches before, they're just crutches that are way easier to use and they're a lot easier on your joints. They don't put a lot of weight on your shoulders and stuff. Yeah, see, that's how you would use it. I think you're a little tall for them though. <laughs> oh, well, I just finally got that neck brace review video uploaded and my sister and my mom are back from the hospital. They are both taking naps. I think they were in the emergency room for like eight or nine hours and all they did was give her a couple bags of saline and some eggs, which she said were very soggy. Unfortunately, my sister is just starting her journey with POTS and I think what happened is exactly what happened to me when I started. I started off on a beta blocker, so that's a medication that lowers your heart rate, which it makes sense to give a POTS patient because the POTS patient has a high heart rate, but a beta blocker also also brings your blood pressure down, which is something that a lot of us already struggle with. So sometimes the beta blocker can kind of work against you. I can definitely remember a few hospital trips until we got my beta blocker just right and added some other medications to offset some of those side effects. It definitely really stings to watch her go through it. I feel really bad, especially because we're leaving again soon and I don't want to leave her when she's in bad shape, but she's got my dad. She's in good hands. As far as I know, my Nana is pretty stable. She is still in the hospital. They had to bring her to a separate facility for an MRI and then bring her back to the hospital, so that was a rough one. Definitely a lot going on in this household. I think I'm gonna cancel my appointment for tomorrow. I have an appointment with my orthopedic surgeon for x-rays of my shoulder, and I talked to my pain doctor today about it, and he was like, listen, the likelihood of you having something going on in your shoulder that is going to show up on an x-ray is very, very, very slim. And even if it does, we don't want to do shoulder surgery on you because your shoulders will not heal. And there's no point in subjecting yourself to extra radiation and wasting your time and energy. He did offer to do an injection for the pain today, but then we ultimately decided against it since I'm leaving Sunday. And we didn't want to try any kind of like long lasting treatments right now because of the possibility of a reaction. So for now, I guess we're just going to leave the shoulder alone, focus on what's going on in the brain all good with me because that means I don't have to go to another appointment tomorrow and my dad is certainly happy that he doesn't have to drive me to another appointment tomorrow but I did just find out I won two Instagram contests today what kind of luck is that like maybe karma finally caught up to me and it's like paying me back for all of the rest of this stuff the first was a blanket giveaway and you guys know how I feel about blankets and it's like white and gray and it's so me and I'm so excited. And the other was actually an Instagram contest put on by the Ehlers Danlos Society. I kind of didn't even really know I was in the running for this, but I guess my post on their page got the most likes. So all I can do is credit you guys for that and thank you guys for being so wonderful during the month of May and being so active in the community. I really appreciate it and it goes a really long way. Sitting here, watering my plants. What else do normal people do at 3 a.m.? I just woke up, I fell asleep on the couch again by accident. It's so weird going from being the person who can never fall asleep to like a person who can't stop falling asleep. Every time I even sit down, I'm just out, like get in the car, sit down and watch a show, out. I'm not quite sure which one's worse. I kind of think this is. <laughs> I'm hoping that once I start to feel better with everything that's going on, this will go away too. Today has just been such a day to process, honestly. There are so many like really big ups and really big downs. Waking up to hear my sister and my grandmother were in the hospital, taking in all of 
the things that my doctor had to say but then finding out that i won some exciting contests <sighs> It's just been a long day to process. And like I said, you know, my sister's doing a little bit better. She just has to go down on the dose of her medication, I think, and she'll be okay. Unfortunately, we just got the word that my grandmother is going to need surgery tomorrow. She's going to be having a spinal fusion, actually. So, um, I know all too well what that means and it's gonna be rough it's gonna be a rough recovery with all of this stuff with them going on and us about to leave that's a lot of weight on my dad who is already working 12 hour shifts it's just crazy i so desperately wish that i was able to just fly under the radar for a while so that everyone else could focus on their own problems but at the end of the day, I just can't. I need help. No, I gotta take care of myself. I can't help anybody until I've helped myself first. But it is good that we were able to knock that one appointment off of the books tomorrow to give everybody a little bit of time to get stuff done. Oh, although now I have to get back in touch with that oxygen guy. The, uh piece that broke off on the oxygen machine he was supposed to send us the whole new cup that screws in and he just sent us the cover which is the part that broke so it would have been fine if he sent us the right size cover but the cover doesn't fit the old cup it's too small the whole cup thing was supposed to arrive days ago hopefully we can get a replacement cup that actually fits in time to leave on Sunday. I don't know. I think that my plants are sufficiently watered. Do you guys want a little plant update? I don't think that I have shown you guys my little plant forest over here in a while. These were all supposed to move into my room. I had my plant lights set up and everything, but unfortunately when everything started to go downhill again, I needed to use my desk for packing space. Look at this pot. Is this not the cutest pot that you have ever seen in your whole life? Some of these plants are a little bit worse for wear. I've been trying to give them some TLC. They got a little banged up, I think, when I went away last time, and, and they didn't have really as much of a watering schedule as they would have if I were home. I still have my weirdo bulbs growing, but uh, this guy's getting quite tall and doesn't seem to want to stop. Oh, you can see me in the window. Hi. But yeah, here's my insane plant forest that is taking over our entire living room. <sighs> Hi guys, it's Thursday. Any semblance of mental clarity that I had yesterday has completely gone. Today, I'm just really not feeling super great. My head is pounding, I'm really, really nauseous. I just cannot think for the life of me. I've been sitting here for like 15 minutes, just trying to like, figure out what to say but i did get an email from my neurosurgeon uh he's concerned last time this was happening it was because i had a blocked vein in my brain and that was causing some stroke-like episodes which they call tias it's just like a mini stroke and a lot of that seems to be similar to what i'm experiencing now so until I see him on Monday, he wants me to go back to the blood thinning injections. My doctor is concerned that there still could be some kind of clotting factor in this, as well as some kind of blood flow issue, and that's not to be messed with. If that is what's going on, that would put me at a pretty high risk for a stroke right now, and that's not something we want to do. So. Looks like I am back to my little injections here. I hope you don't mind me doing this while I'm talking to you. I'm not going to show the needle because I know that freaks some people out. I just, I don't know what to think and I don't know what to expect. And that's really hard for me. I am the kind of person who's like, give it to me straight, you know, I'll do anything. I can put up with anything as long as I know what I'm dealing with. And right now I have no idea what direction. I'm going in those things burn like crazy and I'm just basically going down there blind like literally <laughs> and that's really hard like people keep asking oh when's your surgery gonna be what are you having done I'm trying to pack for the trip and I just have to say I 
don't know. I don't know how long I'll be there. I don't know what we're doing. I'm assuming there will be surgery, but I've learned over the years not to really assume anything. I am a little bit interested to see if maybe these blood thinning injections improve my symptoms a little bit. I swear when I started taking it years ago, it really, really helped. And whenever I've been taken off of it, I really went downhill. And actually this like latest bout of issues that I've been having seemed to start right exactly after they had taken me back off of the Lovenox after the knee surgery and replaced it with aspirin. I guess we just gotta wait and find out. And of course, like as soon as I've showed you guys my little succulent garden, my succulent subscription box comes in the mail. Look at these little guys, they're such cute babies. I can't wait to plant them. I think mm, this one might go in that little village one I have. Also, if you want to see something really adorable and pathetic, the dog always gets super stressed when she sees us packing because she knows we're going to leave. And so she found a bag of my mom's clothes and like dumped it out and now she's just laying on it. We're not even leaving yet. Mom just gone for the day. Dogs are so pure. All right, well, I think my cousin Taylor is gonna come over because I have her Fitbit charger here and she needs that. So I don't know if she's just gonna come over and pick it up. It's so hot, my glasses are literally fogging up. Whew. I don't know if she's just gonna come by and pick it up or if she's gonna stay a little while and hang out. I'm not really like a good conversationalist right now, but you could always watch Netflix. Well, welcome to my basement. We're currently trying to troubleshoot what the heck this beeping sound is. If I didn't already have a headache and ringing ears, the hot water heater seems to be going off. And we have absolutely no idea why or how to fix it. I feel like I'm never gonna get this beeping out of my head. What do we do? Is that dangerous? I don't know. Guess we'll find out. Well, the beeping has ceased. We are all alive. I guess it was some kind of water detector on the hot water heater that we have that was just kind of low on battery or something. So unfortunately, my dad had to leave the hospital with my Nana and come home and like help us figure out how the heck to get the beeping to stop. I feel super bad though. My poor Nana is just having a really hard time right now. And so I'm just so, so thankful that we pushed off our trip a week and we're around here when all of this happened. Otherwise, I don't really know what would have happened. My dad would have had to handle my sister and my grandmother in the hospital on the same day. That just would have been just a disaster, really. And the other thing is that I'm feeling a lot better, like a lot better. And I really do think maybe it was that blood thinning injection. I really was very skeptical. And I'm just clearly feeling better. I'm not feeling myself. I'm not feeling 100% better, but things are better. I don't really know what to think now. I thought I had kind of figured out what was going on. But now that the blood thinner is helping, I'm back to square one. I'm just kind of giving it up to God, honestly, and letting what happens happen. I'm just tired of going over this in my head over and over and trying to figure it out. I'm just gonna make peace with it and wait to see what my doctor says on Monday. All right, well, we are on the road again. It is that time of the week. Also, I'm still feeling better, and I can't help but wonder if it's really just that blood thinning shot was really just like that little kick that I needed to get me through the rest of this week. I don't know. I don't know what to expect, but when I saw the pain doctor a few days ago, I was telling him about how Trish put those towels in the back of my collar and how much it was helping. And he was like, do you have that multi-post therapy collar? And I was like, oh yeah, I do. So he was like, yeah, no, put that on and see if the air pump helps. And so this morning we dug it out and I remembered why I stopped wearing it. <laughs> because it's like super broken. I think I must have another one lying around. I just don't know where. So I took the back from that therapy collar and then just put it onto the rest of my brace. It doesn't work perfectly. Like the Velcro doesn't, wasn't meant to stick on the side, but it's staying. So now I have this little air pump attached that's putting pressure on the back of my head. That was a really good catch from my doctor. I totally forgot I had this. Lauren's in the back, like, trying to pose. <laughs> I like your shirt. Thank you. 
So yeah, she's doing better. You're feeling better, right? Yeah, it was a rough. Did you update the vlog on what happened? Well, I mean, I told them a little bit about what was going on, but basically I think her beta blocker dose was too high and it just bottomed out her blood pressure. So, are you taking any beta blocker now? No. So I think I had low blood pressure to begin with. You did. So I'm yeah. wondering if it was even the tachycardia that I was feeling. I wonder if it was the low blood pressure. Well, she mixed it up like I should be treating so, the low yeah. blood pressure. So you don't think your heart rate's the issue, you think it's the blood pressure? Yeah, because I think that the, the tachycardia is caused by the low blood pressure and treating just the tachycardia is making the blood pressure worse if I just go gotcha. in the opposite direction. Yeah, I think you're right. Which is what we had talked about before. Salt, compression stockings, and fluids. Well, it's we're going to figure it out. You know, POTS is one of those things that's really, really hard to find the right balance in your treatment plan. You really are always running that, like, line between blood pressure and heart rate and, you know, adding salt but not wanting to bottom potassium. And <sighs> I totally take back the thing about feeling better. I'm just sitting in the physical therapy parking lot. My sister's in there having her appointment. I can't even get up. I can't. I can't keep my, I can't. I, I, I can't keep my eyes open. And I keep just drifting to sleep. And my head is pounding. I, 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 hard to talk right now. I'll talk to you, talk to you, talk to you later. Oh my gosh, thank God for Trish. I am definitely feeling like 2,000 times better. I'm still falling asleep though. Every single time I sit down, I mean, I fell asleep in the car. Oh gosh, I've never been this tired in my whole life. Oh, how am I ever supposed to get anything done? Okay, well, I'm just waking up from my nap. I have so much I still have to accomplish tonight. I didn't realize that my aunt and my cousin are flying in tomorrow from Hilton Head and they're gonna be around for a while, but unfortunately since we're leaving Sunday, tomorrow is our only night to see them. So I won't be able to get anything done tomorrow, which means I gotta do it all tonight. And I especially wanna take like a really, really good bath and shower and just exfoliate everything and oil everything. I don't know about you guys, I don't know if this is an EDS thing or just weird me thing, but my skin seems to dry out super fast and I kind of just like shed skin quite quickly, which is kind of nasty, but I have to do a lot of exfoliating. I exfoliate like twice a day. And whenever I know that I'm like headed for the hospital or headed for a surgery or something like that, I take like a two hour long bath where I just like scrub everything completely down and then douse myself in oil. Try to hold on to like a little bit of moisture. Cause I don't know if I'm gonna get a chance to take like a really, really good bath and shower again before we leave on Sunday since my nurse is coming to access my port again Sunday morning. When you have to work around a port and a dressing, you just can't get all of the areas without accidentally getting something wet. And then I have some last minute Etsy orders that came in today that I have to work on. And yeah. Oh, I made this little necklace. I got this little opal elephant. It's funny, I saw a girl in PT who had a necklace with this little opal elephant, and I was like, I need one of those. So I ordered the charm on Etsy, and I whipped this up as I was falling asleep. So shout out to that girl in PT. You've inspired me. Now we have matching little necklaces. I'm stalling. Gotta go. Check in with you later. This is going to be quite a process but I am determined to enjoy it. And I'm so excited because I finally get to try out my like extra strength Theramu bath crystals. These are the ones with the CBD oil in it and the emu oil. They sent this to me like way back before my knee surgery, but then I wasn't allowed to take a bath for a long time because even when the incision healed, I still wasn't allowed to take a bath because I wasn't able to get out of the bathtub, especially if there was oil in it. They were afraid I was gonna slip. 
So I finally get to try this out. And I'm also gonna pop in one of these little like bath fizzies that Abby made for me. It's peppermint. This whole theme is going to be peppermint. But I'm excited to try this. I've been loving the soap she made me. I've pretty much used up like half the bar already. And I might even add a little bit of like a bubble bar in from Lush that I have just for fun. Anyway, I'm gonna go do this. I'm already tired just looking at all of this. packing up the last of the Etsy orders that I have now we're leaving tomorrow so I think I want to just close the shop down while we're gone so I can focus on my health and I don't have to pack all that stuff with me I apologize to be closing it again hopefully when I get back when I say hi 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 follow me I'm just kidding from, no no plug yourself my cousin here from South Carolina yeah my um, Instagram is at hannah.axel Nice. Follow her. Mm -hmm. She's really awesome. Hoping to make it to Boston. Yes. Sometime. So she's really into crew or rowing. Mm -hmm. What do you call it? Yeah, just rowing. Rowing. And all the schools oh, want her. She gets to check out yeah. all the schools. Yeah. Are you checking out MIT? Mm -hmm. Checked out Boston Harvard. College. Yeah. Boston College. Yeah. So I'm excited. Hoping yeah. to be closer to these people. Oh, that would be so great having Jeeva up here and having yeah everyone's coming north guys mm -hmm. everyone's moving notice north. me what are you <laughs> doing Lauren she wants she wants to be in the notice me sometime and super glad we got to see her before we leave because we were supposed to leave on Monday and then we would have yeah, missed you no I wasn't expecting you to come here and it was just a great surprise that's not you anyway I'm gonna go I'm gonna go hang out with my family the Etsy shop is going to be closed for a little while and when I get home I will open it back up also look my aunt brought me this new little backpack totally perfect to carry my pump around in oh it's so cute <laughs> I am off to bed now. It was so nice to have the day to spend with family, especially since we're leaving tomorrow and everything is so uncertain. It's just really nice to have such a nice little send off. You know, it's definitely kind of helped me to keep my mind off everything and, and feel normal for the night and not feel sorry for myself. But that does mean that somehow I'm going to have to get this video like totally edited and uploaded tomorrow while also driving. I don't know how that's gonna work especially since my like hard drive is giving me issues so I'm gonna end this vlog here so I don't have any extra footage to have to go through and I guess we'll all see what next week holds thanks for coming along and sticking with me for this week if you did like this video you can give it a thumbs up if you want to see next week's video you can hit that subscribe button and that bell will tell you when I upload it and if you're looking for more moment to moment updates I think the best place to follow me is probably on my Instagram which is always linked down below I also have a Facebook I have my personal Facebook and I have my medical Facebook so if you don't want to see all the other stuff and you just want to get updates you can follow me on the medical Facebook I'm gonna warn you, I haven't been answering my Facebook messages lately. I'm really sorry, I just, I can't do it. And like I said, my Etsy shop will be closing while I'm gone. So, sorry about that guys, I have no control over that. Hopefully it gets better soon. Talk to you guys next week. Goodbye!